The great white shark, majestic, powerful, and iconic. For decades, aquariums around the world have tried to keep this apex predator in captivity, and nearly every attempt has ended in failure. Despite advances in marine biology and aquarium engineering, great white sharks consistently die, or must be released shortly after capture. So why is it that this species, so captivating to humans, simply cannot survive behind glass? Today, we dive into five scientific reasons why great white sharks don't survive in captivity, and why they probably never will. 1. Ram ventilation and the physiology of movement. Unlike many bony fish and some species of sharks, great whites cannot breathe passively. They rely on obligatory ram ventilation, a respiratory process that requires continuous forward motion to drive water over their gills and extract oxygen. In the wild, great whites swim thousands of miles each year, typically cruising at around 2 to 3 miles per hour, with bursts of speed exceeding 25 miles per hour. This constant movement isn't just a habit, it's a physiological necessity. In captivity, even the largest aquarium tanks cannot replicate the vast, dynamic spaces these sharks are adapted to. Their need for open water and continuous forward propulsion becomes impossible to meet in artificial environments. The result is often hypoxia, disorientation, and physical trauma from repeated collisions with the tank walls. This mechanical mismatch between their biological design and the limitations of captivity is one of the first and most fatal barriers to keeping them alive. 2. Extreme sensory sensitivity and environmental stress. The great white shark is equipped with an incredibly advanced sensory array. Among its most impressive adaptations are the impulae of Lorenzini, gel-filled pores located around the snout that detect electric fields as weak as one billionth of a volt. These electroreceptors help great whites locate prey hidden beneath sand or detect the bioelectric signatures of injured animals from meters away. In the open ocean, this sensitivity is an evolutionary advantage. In captivity, however, it becomes a source of extreme stress. Artificial lighting, Electromagnetic interference from equipment, visual reflections on glass, and even the presence of crowds create a constant barrage of unnatural stimuli. The shark's nervous system, evolved for the subtle cues of the ocean, is overwhelmed, resulting in hyperstimulation, panic, and erratic swimming behavior. These stress responses can suppress appetite, impair immune function, and rapidly accelerate systemic breakdown. Third, complex feeding ecology and metabolic needs. Great white sharks are highly specialized hunters. In the wild, they consume a variety of prey depending on life stage and regional availability, from fish and squid to large marine mammals like seals and sea lions. They're not just passive feeders, great whites rely on complex behaviors like stealth, sudden acceleration, and vertical ambush to catch prey, behaviors that are impossible to replicate in a tank. Offering dead fish or simplified meals in captivity fails to engage their feeding instincts. Many captive great whites refuse food altogether, often leading to starvation within days or weeks. Moreover, their bodies use regional endothermy, meaning they can warm specific areas such as their eyes and muscles, giving them the ability to function in cold waters. But this adaptation also comes with precise metabolic requirements that are hard to replicate in artificial environments. Imbalanced nutrition, stress, or inadequate water temperatures can disrupt their thermoregulation and digestion, leading to liver failure, infections, and other fatal complications. 4. Spatial disorientation and loss of natural behavior. Great whites are highly migratory, covering tens of thousands of kilometers across vast pelagic routes, Tagging studies have shown them traveling from California to Hawaii, and even across oceans. These sharks don't just swim, they navigate. Research suggests they may use the Earth's magnetic field, temperature gradients, and ocean currents as part of a complex internal guidance system. Place them in a confined, closed-loop space, and their sense of direction and spatial orientation collapses. Instead of engaging in normal behavior, captive sharks may swim in repetitive loops or become lethargic and inactive, both signs of cognitive and physiological decline. This loss of behavioral context, combined with sensory overload and movement restrictions, accelerates physical exhaustion and psychological distress. 5. Poor compatibility with human handling and veterinary care. Unlike marine mammals or even some shark species, great whites are completely unaccustomed to human handling. They cannot be sedated, trained, or physically restrained without severe risk. The capture process itself often causes internal injuries, immune suppression, or acute dehydration. Their physiology, finely tuned for the ocean's dynamic conditions, decompensates quickly when those parameters are disrupted. Veterinary intervention is nearly impossible. Invasive diagnostics, medications, or surgical procedures are out of reach. Even minimal contact can trigger panic or violent escape responses, causing further trauma. In short, the human tools we use to care for marine animals simply don't work on great whites. Conclusion, the ocean is their only home. The great white shark is a creature of scale, movement, and complexity. Every aspect of its biology, its breathing, senses, metabolism, and behavior, is adapted for life in the vast, ever-changing ocean. Attempts to confine it, no matter how advanced the facility, fail not because we aren't trying hard enough, but because this species was never meant to be confined. 
The great white is a reminder that the most powerful species on earth often need the most freedom. Let's admire them where they belong, in the wild.